Hello, my name is Chris Lowe, I'm from Low Martial Arts, which is based in Manchester, and today we're going to go through some basic and intermediate kickboxing and striking principles uh, for the Warrior Collective. My assistant today is Joe Fairclough, she's my, one of my senior uh, instructors and fighters at Low Martial Arts and also head coach of Kaijo Kickboxing. Okay, we're going to get straight into it now. First thing I'm going to talk about is basic guard. When I'm facing my opponent, one of, my, one of the major principles I teach at my club here is I like to keep my hands out nice and forward, nice and straight, nice and in front of myself. The reason being, if I adopt an old stance boxing guard and my hands here, they have a direct route to my chin on my jab here and come straight to my nose. I have a lot of work to do to make sure I'm covered and safe. If my hands are out here, principally if she jabs, she has to get past one, cross, get past the other before she can land an effective strike to the face. Okay, so we're just going to run through that again. Here, Old school boxing stance, doesn't suit us, doesn't suit us. We like to say, hands out approach, we can parry, parry, keeping our elbows down nice and tight, and third shot is, is, the, is the one we have to worry about. As it is directly, she could throw a nice one, two, one, two, and we'll leave my hands curling out, trying uh, try to uh, parry down shots that are not, not necessarily going to hit every time. So again, my, my hands effectively come out, one lead hand, six, eight to eight inches further than the other, reverse hand, three inches off the chin, lead parry, reverse parry, and it's the third shot here. That's my only worry. Okay, when we are striking, or when we're, when we're, pro, when we're, we're hitting on the counter, or we're wanting to strike back on our opponent, from this position here, I have to go through with my students, we always say, you know, I can't land jabs, I can't land any jabs, so what? I always try to, try to get, every guy, get every guy to do is as we stand on our approach, as we come into jab, instead of just jabbing here, we don't go hit for the guard, we're going to take a slight two or three inch side step. We call this cutting in as I cut into the middle of the body. If I just turn your around here, for example, I want to land my jab here, my jab, I want to land my jab here, okay, put right at the end of my chin. All I get to see is the cut of the body, okay. If effectively I take my two inch uh, tour in, as I come in strike, I can take full face and then move on to switch to the body. So every kickboxing principle we take, we take it from the cutting angle. So every drill we move on from, I always make sure the first thing the students are doing as they come in approach for the jab is they're cutting in left. Okay. <coughs> so from there moving on to guard positions. Your basic guard position, there's many ways to, to parry and, and, and evade and move punches and kicks. So we're going to go for uh, once exactly where I'm not, my body's not moving but I'm using my hands, I'm using my limbs. First of all I'm going to take the first two which is, which is what I call your basic parry. I have my lead parry, okay, I don't make any fast large movements, they encourage the cross to the chin. A nice open hand inside my glove to so just smoothly take the glove and then on the return. Both times I keep my elbows nice and down towards my ribs, okay, I don't keep them up here, I don't let them ride up, I don't take any. Uh, deep, deep angled stances. So again, first two, one and two, that's how I roll. All the time as I'm moving, my body should be rolling and taking the shots, keeping my head moving, as everybody knows, a still head's a hit head. So, <clears throat> the basic one, two, parry, left and right. Okay. When we're parrying like this, it can encourage a nice return from the jab, one, two. The body movement, swifts in from my hip, again, one, two. Okay, I can land a swift shot. <coughs> From this position here, if I'm moving on to defending hook punches, okay, it's uh, quite, you know, a common thing for me to use what's, what, what we call the, uh, uh, the, the, the cover guard, okay, which is, or the hairbrush block, which is grabbing from the back of the neck. So just gonna throw a nice big hook punch to the back of my head, I can cover it here, a nice small triangle angle so it doesn't snip through and hit me on the jaw. <coughs> As it said for boxing, that's okay. She might throw two hook punches left and right. That's right, left and right. Left and right. Okay, it's all very well. When I'm kickboxing, <clears throat> I always have the, um, the there's always a chance that the hand will be thrown, and I, I, I can't see what's coming next. It's more more likely going to be a leg. They might feign the hand and throw the leg. Okay. The danger with that is if she throws a, if she throws the right hand to my head and I cover high, I'm going to get a nice body shot with the leg into the lower rib, okay. <clears throat> to accommodate that into my guard, obviously as I keep moving, what I try to do is, is keep my eyes on my opponent but bring my chin down towards my shoulder, my, uh, the front of my chest. 
As I do that, I'm going to keep, as before, I'm going to keep my elbows low and soak up the shot through the body as I curve away from it. <clears throat> All this does is give me a little bit of added insurance that if she does switch from head to body straight away, head to body, I'm covered on both sides. So we'll just give that a little bit of live time. So we'll go old fashioned, come curve way, bam. I'm going to encourage a nice good strike there. I've got a lot of movement to get my, uh, to get my elbow down. If I keep my eye on my target, I keep my body rolling and moving, cover, glove to the side of the head, slightly curved in, let the body ride the shot, I can take both without having to guess high and low. Okay? So, <clears throat> principally, both sides. Jab, cover, sorry, again, jab, parry, cross, parry. The same hand hook punch comes in, covers, and with the body shot, covers set. And straight from the other side, hook punch to the head, roll and cover, and to the body shot with the, with the, lead, with the lead leg, or the reverse, you're covered without, making too, without taking too much damage to the ribs. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so from there we move up to setting our shots. Uh, first, we, 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 we can go to any Joe joining team and they might say, you know what, this is where we are, this is our hand working distance. And this is our leg working distance, two or three inches back behind. Well, it doesn't work for me. <coughs> what works for me is this here. This is my hand distance, this is my leg distance. It's all the same to me. When I'm setting up shots, if I'm jabbing and I'm cutting in, and my hands are working nice, it stands to reason, my body shots and my head shots, they're at half the distance that my straight hand is, or my straight leg. So I have to have decent footwork, I have to be able to move my body. When I move, I stay on my toes. It's rare that I'm going to put my heels down. I don't want to encourage any cross stepping over unless I'm switch hitting. Because at this point, highly dangerous if I take a strike here, that's where my balance point's gone. So, what I like to do is if I'm moving forward, I'm always going to push from the back. And if I'm moving backwards, I'm always going to push off the lead. I can effectively cover and keep my stance strong <clears throat> and hopefully either contain or parry the shots. When I'm setting up my hands, if I'm setting up for the body, I have to move my feet. All my punching and all my kicking is coming from my hips. So, if I want to land a decent hook punch, there's absolutely no point in throwing, cutting in, throwing jab, cross, and trying to wide angle the hook here. It's ter telegraph, extremely easy. It's a quick cover and a quick return with the, with the lead hand. To get by that, I move my feet. I take, I, I could be close with my jab, my cross, and then I'm going to step in, covering the right hand side of my chin, open as we've done, we've cut through the body, I can see a nice, uh, nice line right through the middle of the body as I cut across, and I can bang the body shot. <clears throat> Watch that again. I come, I come in, I jab, cutting in nicely, cross, and as I cut across the body with my left hand, right hand comes up nice and tight, guiding my chin, not sticking up too high, just nicely up over the shoulder line here and back, covering the shot. <clears throat> so from that position, we move on to our, our, our defensive uh, movements with our legs. <clears throat> Taking from my hands, my parries, my one, two, and then my boxing covers, three, four, and now my kickboxing covers, five and six. I have to move on to my legs. <clears throat> For me, any kickboxing uh, that involves leg shots, it, it, it changes the fight completely for me. One or two inside leg kicks is going to encourage a fighter to change stance. Once you change stance, one or two more leg kicks, and the fighter <coughs> then has no legs, and that's when he starts to get to apply. <coughs> Basically, old tie style will, 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 will teach me to keep my toe down, my teeth down, and uh, Hide right the knee into the corner. When I'm using this principle, I make sure that I'm not just lifting my knee directly towards my partner. If I'm uh, my, my opponent, if I if I lift my knee directly towards my opponent, that will cave my nice a little nice in, will cave my leg and throw my balance. To get this right, I have to meet. I have to put my aggression through, meet meet the kick straight on, and direct my knee to the corner of the ring or the room. Get nice and strong. Being careful not to overweight as I land down, but again, in, 
and down. And please play again on the other side. If the shot comes in, up towards the corner, and then down. So we can drill that out. Basic, um, basic defensive drilling will be parry, parry, cover from the head, boxes down, and then the body, and we'll kick box in, and then to the legs, we'll low kick, it's one and two. It's your basic drill for uh, getting started on how to keep yourself safe as, you, as, you, as you're learning to kickbox or tie -ups. So just a little bit quicker, we'll go one, two, cover, cover, big body, right the shot, and the other side. And then with the legs, one and two. When we're doing any drill of this sort, we have to make sure we're moving. Okay, I do, I do a lot of uh, visiting clubs, there's a lot of static pad work, a lot of static drill work. I can stand here all day, my heels down, and not be able to replicate the body movement when I come to stepping inside a ring. So I have to move. We can start, the way we do this, we start with slow. We ask for the jab and cross with a nod, we ask for the hook punches with a nod as we're moving, then we ask for the body shots, similarly, and then onto the leg shots. That way. And we build up until we're at a fast pace. A basic drill can start you out from beginner level, but, but absolutely 100% works right through to advanced, just a great way to start warming up, a great way to start running in uh, to, to your day's training. Also, gives you a, a good build of resistance. You're not just getting in and starting knocking lumps out of each other. So again, parry, parry, cover head, cover head, and body, then left and left. Okay. From here, I'm going to move on to uh, how I'm going to land my shots. Landing shots is not as easy as it, as it looks. It's not as simple as it is. I can't just get in and start throwing. Okay. I won't be scoring from hitting on somebody's guard. <coughs> Every time my hand is out, it leaves me open at some point in front of an, uh, an, an area of vulnerability. When I throw a shot, I'm going to drive my chin deep towards my, my shoulder. If the high hand comes over the top in this way, it may flip the top of my head. But I'm not riding my chin high and exposing the long shot. <coughs> this is what we call the neck snapper. If my, hat, my chin hat rises higher as, as I cut in a jab and over the top and my head moves back, that's, uh, that's what we call the neck snapper. That's when your brain rattles around in your head and off go the lines. So I keep my chin down, deep into my shoulder, move forward and strike. If the shot rides right over the top, I've got nice, fluid, floor, stability. Everything is going to go through into the floor and not rock my head around. <clears throat> So, moving in to get the shot, I'm going to move in with my jab and my cross. Cut across with the body, cutting down the angle. And then from this position here, I need to keep myself safe. I'm quite close, I'm quite vulnerable, my hands have to be fast from this point. I'm only dipping once, twice on the way out. <clears throat> nice steady drill. So in, your partner can cover, to cover with, uh, with Paris. One, two, step in, body shot, head shot, and out. Making sure all the time I'm focusing, not rocking back on my heels, and I'm using my, the balls of my feet to move. Hips and balls of my feet. One, two, in, covering across, three, four, and back out. Nice steady hand movement. Setting up your hands <clears throat> can feel relatively easy. Moving to your legs is a lot more difficult. If I cut in close with the body here, I'm out of range for a round ass kick. I'm, I'm, I can overshoot. If I keep my chin up high and a long jab, uh, something that a lot of fighters do, a lot of new fighters do, if you keep my chin up and a long jab, I'm always, as a lean, out of range to land an effective kick. Over my years, I've seen many, many fights, loads of brilliant kicks, loads of spinning action, lots of high legs, and rarely the, the land. It's a skill in itself to put yourself in the right position to land these shots. <coughs> As I'm coming in, as I, as I, approach, as I approach this shot, I've got, to be, I've got to be thinking about how I'm going to land this leg, <clears throat> or whatever it may be. And the way I do that is simple. When you strike, we always look to hit on the half beat. An effective striker, or a regular striker, will be, will be throwing punches at a natural rhythm. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
You try and gain a little bit of advantage by hitting on the half beat. The half beat is the time and space in between the hands or the leg shots or both. Okay? <clears throat> I start, one of the basic drills with this is launching my jab straight into my left leg. I use this um, practically every training session with my fighters. It's something uh, that I, I, I think every, every fighter should be able to do. Hitting on the half beat is really important. They're the shots that, are, that most are going to land for you and, and they work out really well. They've always done me uh, good in the past. As I jab forward here now, I'm going to briefly plant my weight into the floor. As I do that, that's my springboard to, to get to lift my leg into the jaw position. Once my foot goes towards the jaw, I'm aiming to curl my toes around to the back of the head. Okay? I don't want to be kicking with my toes. <coughs> I get zero power into it and uh, it, it, you know, it doesn't it hurts. So basically, I'm going to be approaching this shot, planting my weight just a very slightly for a brief, brief amount of time as I cut the angle at the same time. Back. From this position here, that's my springboard then to curl the toe from the lead hand around the back of the head. Okay? You start off slow when you're teaching this principle because it kind of involves hopping in. We like, uh, you're like pouncing a bit like a tiger. So you're in, one, two. Again, slow and exaggerated. One, two. Build up slow, your hand should land exactly at the point where your lead leg is ready to strike. The timing then, the push off the floor, will bring your lead strike, your lead leg strike in, into the jaw on the half beat, which is the half point between your punches. Done effectively in the right, can produce a nice, uh, very quick forward attack. Done with a lot of speed, okay. Uh, often will catch up your opponent. Okay, from that position there, we learn to land the roundhouse kick off the end. I call that landing it off the end of the glove. This is my position, that's my target area that sets up the leg. Also, I can use the same principle for my linear kicks, my straight moving kick. Every decent fighter in my eyes should build their fight around their front kick. Okay? Uh, you know, as, as time goes on and the fight progresses, boxing is getting um, better and better and better in, in the arts, and you really, you really can get caught short, got caught out if your hands aren't quick and high. Now, like the old school way, and we're going, where we kick boxing down here, we completely abandon that now uh, in my school, and we, we try and adopt the tie stance. When I'm setting up my straight kicks, it's, uh, it's principally the same thing. The body action, is, is stolen straight from uh, old karate teaching. If she fires the jab and I cut in nice and tight with my chin, uh, with, with my eye directly shooting towards the elbow, I can now set up an effective straight line kick. The way I do this is the body roll on my shoulder. As she comes in, I slip from that position there, my shoulder rotates, and I land deep in the stone. It's really important that we get to grips with this because, you know, from the, the, the natural, the natural one for fighter to do is to throw these kind of kicks at this range. Okay? It takes minimal movement and effort for your opponent to, uh, to bypass that. They'll see your shoulder move, they're very easy to telegraph, they'll see you moving. They'll cut by and come in and land a strong jab and cross or whatever they want to do. So I set it up, she be throwing jabs, I'm hitting and moving, okay, and I wait until the, 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 the opportunity arrives to come in, I might take the body shot, I turn straight in. Again, at first, it can feel a little close quarter, it can feel a little bit too close, but you have to work on it just a little bit, get you, get you, make sure that you set that you, you cued right in the centre, and you, at the point of your turn, you'll be at a prime striking position. Go back away. And again, in, one, two. You see that was a little deeper. Sorry about that, Joe. <laughs> okay. And then again, remember your basics. When we do any turning kick, I certainly don't want to be leaving my head. And then, 
and my eyes away from my target and, and, and certainly don't want to be throwing my body away. Sending off my energy into the corner of the room. <coughs> so, to land the shot, I'm generally going to measure it with the target from my hand. I try and encourage all my students to mix their hand to leg, um, the combos of hand and leg, to mix deeply in the, you know, separate the combinations which mix, mixed up well. I don't like to use combinations at all. All hands, one, two, three, and then big leg finish. Extremely predictable, or big leg start, bam, bam, one, two, okay? Although they can be effective, I think as you get more advanced, you need to really be starting mixing up. And your transition speed, through mixing it up, is extremely important. Again, we're hitting on the half beat. So take it from the front leg to the back leg this time. When, when I want to land this reverse roundhouse, this is thrown, you see this in tie fights all the time. They'll throw, they'll come in, and bam, and they turn away. I really enjoy landing this kick because I'm, uh, I have my, my timing right. The way my timing works with this is as I cut in and throw my jab on my cross, as I've guarded my chin and pushed my cross through hard, at this point here, my, hip, my one hip turn that I've used for my, my cross is also going to guide my leg towards my target. Again, the target is the back of the head, so I'll cover this way. Okay? One, so it basically, you'll see, you'll see this a lot. Jab, cross, roundhouse. Again, club to club, all over the country. Jab, cross, nice hard roundhouse. Very good, looks very nice. <laughs> very good, looks very nice. But, um, damage wise, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna land that all too often. The guard's already high, uh, they're, they're already covering the chin. You might, you might rattle the head a little bit, but you're not gonna stop them, you're not gonna put them down. To put them down, as I turn my hip into my cross, I have to leave, my foot has to leave the floor at the same time. To do that, I have to stay light on my base foot, okay? I don't want to be planting my weight heavy. If I plant my weight heavy, it'll just be uh, my bad look at that point, I'll take a nice leg kick to the thigh, and it's pretty quite effective in my fight. I'm going to cut in, jab and cross. In this movement here, my leg is already in transit. It's already moving towards my target. So, slowly, on the beat would be jab, cross, roundhouse. On the half beat would be... The cross is landing, the roundhouse is landing, split second later. I don't give it any time, I don't give, the, uh, I don't give my opponent any time to steady the guard or steady the foot position. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Good, sorry about this. Come on. Again, uh, done on the beat. One, two, three. And done on the half beat. There. So I'm going to land my effective head kicks. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. That concludes our basic and intermediate tutorial on kickboxing's uh, effective striking. Uh, I've been Chris Lowe from Low Martial Arts Manchester. Uh, this is Joe Fairclough. And um, if you'd like to see any more of our tutorials uh, or any more of what we do as a club, please visit lowmartialarts.com or again uh, the website or YouTube channel www.warriorcollective.